Continue our conversation right now on how France is coping with the terror attack in Paris last week and how Muslims are responding both in France and around the world. Joining me now from Fort Worth, Texas is Saha Aziz. She teaches national security and civil rights law at the University of Texas A&M. Saha, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. Charlie Hebdo, the satirical newspaper, is back on the streets of Paris. It is again depicting uh, the Prophet Muhammad. What do you make of that? Well, I think that they're trying to make the point that no one can scare them into exercising their free speech rights, which I think is the correct thing to do in terms of sending the message that we will not be terrorized from giving up our fundamental rights. On the same token, I think it's important for the magazine to find a way to signal to Muslims around the world that this is really about free speech. It's not about subordinating Muslims or being racist against Muslims or attempting to discriminate against Muslims. But this is, in fact, a very fundamental part of French society. Now, many Muslims will still not agree with portraying Prophet Muhammad in uh, picture because this is against their fundamental religious beliefs. But I think it's just important that the magazine communicates clearly that this is not about hating Islam or hating Muslims, but this is about a French principle of free speech. Should there be limits on something that deeply offends large sectors of a community in a country? Well, you know, from an American perspective, we take the First Amendment very seriously, and we as a country have decided that even if it is at the expense of subordinated groups, that people can speak freely even if it's offensive. However, what's important to keep in mind is that the policies and the practices of a country, the way in which the government exercises its power, its resources, must be non-discriminatory. So even if there is a private magazine or a private person who wants to engage in speech that is very offensive, to certain groups that the government is not acting on that and that the government is treating everyone fairly equally and ensuring that certain groups particularly based on religion or ethnicity or race are not in effect being discriminated by society and by the government is there a danger here that there could be an anti-muslim backlash in a place like france right now uh, after we look at the incident uh, of the past week Oh, absolutely. It's not a fear. It's a reality. There is an organization called Tell Mama in the United Kingdom that has been tracking anti-Muslim hate crimes both in the UK and in Europe. And their website has reported at least 16 incidents of uh, hate crimes, vandalization of mosques, attacks on people who visibly look Muslim. Uh, they've also reported 50 threats uh, via the Internet. And they're taking information up from people who are complaining of feeling that they are being punished collectively because they're Muslim, simply because you had three possibly more uh, criminals who are terrorists who claim that they did it in the name of religion, but that doesn't necessarily mean that it's legitimate or that the 1.7 billion Muslims around the world agree with them or that the religious leaders within Islam agree with them. So there is, in fact, a backlash going on. Well, right. You wrote a piece recently in the Huffington Post, the online newspaper, in which you were very critical of French law enforcement and their strategy, particularly. You wrote, the calculated assassination of France's best satirist raises serious concerns about the focus of French counterterrorism strategy. What did you mean by that? Well, this was a major intelligence failure because the men who perpetrated the attacks against the Charlie Hebdo cartoonists were known to, or they should have been known, to the counterterrorism and intelligence community. They had all of the indications, the acts that they committed, and their behavior should have been something that should have been detected. And so the concern is, why did they fail to detect this plot beforehand and prevent it? And my concern is, there may be the explanation. We don't know yet, and there should be an investigation in France to determine why the intelligence didn't catch this plot. But my concern is, is it because they were spread too thin engaging in religious profiling, which is effectively focusing on people who are very religious as opposed to people who are objectively preparing to engage in illegal, violent terrorist acts. And you have five million Muslims, a portion of which are very orthodox. Just because they're orthodox doesn't make them prone to terrorism. And so my article was meant to ask that question, is if you are engaging in religious profiling, this may be one of the reasons why you missed this plot. 
among other reasons. There's been a lot of heated debate about what has happened in Paris last week, and there are many people saying that Muslim leaders should now uh, vocally denounce things that happened in Paris. I mean, I have looked at newspapers, I've looked on the internet, I have seen many, many Muslim leaders across the world denounce this in Paris. Uh, I mean, are these critics just not hearing them or don't want to hear them? I think they don't want to hear them. I think many of these critics already have made up their minds without looking at the facts or the evidence. They are entering the conversation with preconceived notions and biases because it's not based on the facts. It's based on their own stereotypes or their own uh, prejudgments, which is quite unfortunate. Many people who are engaging in this debate, and any time they're engaging in a debate regarding Muslims, whether it's in the U.S. or in Europe or in France, oftentimes come to the debate with a political agenda, a predetermined political agenda. And this is what makes many Muslims very upset about these discussions, is they don't think that they're in good faith. They don't see them as trying to work with Muslim communities to rout out the criminal elements. Every community has criminal elements in it. And the vast majority of each community does not welcome those criminal elements and in fact is in danger equally as anyone outside the community from those criminal elements. If you look at who was murdered within the attacks in Paris, you had the police officer who was of Algerian descent. Um, and there was uh, one of the editors at Charles Hebdo was also a Muslim French person. So it's not as if a Muslim terrorist doesn't kill Muslims. They do it all the time in the Middle East and South Asia. So the question is these critics, if they're going to engage in these debates, they need to come equipped with the facts, they need to do their research, and they need to engage in a good faith effort to try to solve a problem that threatens everyone in society. Saha Aziz, thanks for joining us. We're going to have to leave it there. And